Hi guys, so recently I've had a few comments about how electric cars could be worse than petrol or diesel cars in terms of emissions. Now this is based on claims which I actually highlighted in one of my recent videos from Imperial College London which now says that 52% of small particle pollution from road transport actually comes from tyres and brakes. In fact, it was widely reported by media that emissions from tyre wear could be 1,000 times higher than exhaust emissions, although I very much doubt that. I think that's like a worst case scenario. So that being said, it is to say basically that tyres and brakes are now being claimed as being worse pollutants than actual tailpipe emissions. Now this of course immediately set the cat amongst the pigeons when it comes to people that maybe a little bit critical of EVs because they said well that means the electric cars must be just as bad as ice which is internal combustion engine cars because they also have tyres and brakes. More than that, their particulate emissions from tyres and brakes would theoretically be worse because they are heavier vehicles. I'll come back to that, but I would say that it is a genuine concern that once they have finished taxing, charging, and generally penalizing petrol and diesel cars pretty much off the road entirely, their attention will inevitably turn to EVs and they will start to hit the drivers of those with punitive charges for those emissions too, perceived or otherwise. However, it is fair, is it fair to say that EVs might actually be worse than ICE cars for emissions from tires and brakes? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll discuss that in this video. Brown car guy. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. Now, to start with, let me just well start by saying that this is not about being pro EV or anti EV because I am neither in fact I'm just pro car all cars and that includes EVs I've reviewed a lot of EVs lately and I've just recently put up a written review of the BMW i4 M50 on browncarguy.com go check it out and I gotta say if I had that sort of money and it's a lot of money then uh, I, I would have that in a heartbeat it's absolutely brilliant However, EVs have come under criticism after uh, MP George Eustace, who was Environment Secretary, I believe, until September last year. He actually made some controversial comments about EVs and pollution. This is what he said. The unknown thing at the moment is how far switching from diesel and petrol to electric vehicles will get us. There is skepticism. Some say that just wear and tear on the roads and the fact that these vehicles are heavier means that the gains may be less than some people hope, but it is slightly unknown at the moment. Now, to be fair, EVs do tend to be heavier than ICE equivalents, around 50% heavier, in fact, or around that much. So it's not entirely an outrageous statement to make. But as is so common with people in those positions of power, he's clearly not fully apprised of the situation. Now, let's look at braking first. Braking on EVs, that is, because this is something that I already knew about. And actually, I mentioned it in one of my other videos. So we'll cover this first, and then we'll discuss tires, because... The situation with tires is actually something that even I've just had to learn a little bit more about for myself. Okay, so now the thing with EVs is that they are a little bit like, actually no, they're actually completely like remote control cars. Now, if you've ever played with a battery powered RC car, you know that you usually push the little toggle forward to go. And then to brake, you just let go of the toggle and the car just simply comes to a halt. It's a similar thing with EVs. The motor itself does the slowing down. And in some cases where you have like one pedal uh, drive mode systems in the cars, the motor, when it stops, it can stop the car. Another reason that EVs will do this is because they have a regen system that harnesses the kinetic energy that comes from that braking and converts it back into electricity, which sends it back to the battery to charge it up. Basically, this is why EVs work so well in traffic in terms of range, because the constant stopping and slowing keeps keeps recharging the battery and extends the range. And it's for this reason, in fact, that actually traditional brakes on an EV barely get used. In fact, the brake pad lifespan on some Nissan LEAF models has been known to reach between 80,000 to 100,000 miles. In fact, one guy whose company specializes in servicing and repairing electric cars told me that the biggest issue they actually have with the brakes on EVs is that they get seized because they haven't been used enough. He tells some of his customers to occasionally go out and make use of the brake pedal to give those discs and pads a bit of a workout. Now talking of which, 
there is so little demand on the brakes that Volkswagen, for example, has switched from disc brakes on the rear wheels back to drum brakes. Yep, I bet you haven't heard of those since the 1970s. But there again, there, uh, there is another reason that particular emissions from brakes on EVs is actually reduced and it's to do with the drum brakes. You see, disc and pads are exposed. You can usually see them through the wheels and they have to be because it helps to dissipate the heat buildup. And of course, you find yourself, like I do, constantly having to clean the brake dust off your alloys. However, the heat buildup is not an issue on EVs because it needs less braking. Hence, the drum brakes work and the drum brakes are enclosed. So any particulate emission that you do get off them, it doesn't get released out into the environment. Therefore, it is safe to conclude that EVs uh, have much less brake particulate emissions compared to ICE vehicles. Brown car guy. Now then, tires. Now there are some claims that tires could produce over nine grams of particulate matter per mile. Now what exactly is particulate matter? It's tiny invisible bits of rubber. So hang on a minute. A tire, a whole tire, weighs about 10 kilograms on average, right? So if it was losing nine grams per mile, basically the entire tire would disappear within a thousand miles. Now clearly that doesn't happen. So that fact, wherever that's from, is, can't be right. Yes, EVs are heavier. So you would expect the wear on the tires to be significantly greater. That is if they were shod with ordinary tires. And this is something I've forgotten too. EVs get their own tires. Low rolling resistance tires, low road nose tires, all of these are important aspects of the tires that go into an EV to make the most of the advantages of an EV. Low rolling resistance tires are needed to increase the range as much as possible and no road nose tires are needed because, well, the cars are already so quiet because there's no engine noise, so the road roar would be really amplified, so you want to keep that as low as possible, so you need that. Plus, the tires that they have for EVs have reinforced sidewalls to compensate for the extra weight. The other thing to remember is that while there is a lot of torque on EVs, which if fully deployed would easily shred those tires, you've got to keep in mind that nearly all of these cars, being modern cars, have advanced traction control systems that will control and modulate how much torque is going through each wheel to keep them operating within the parameters of the, the grip that's available to that tire. So tire wear is actually on par with regular cars, A, because of the more advanced tires and B, because of the traction control systems. Hence, it's no worse than regular cars. The only problem is that the dedicated EV tires are more expensive, sometimes up to 80% more expensive. And you certainly must not compromise by buying cheaper alternatives or God forbid remolds for your EV. So overall emissions for EVs are always going to be substantially lower than ICE cars because no tailpipe emissions and the rest of it isn't really that much either. Although of course none of this mitigates the authorities from penalizing owners for some reason or another in the near future and charging us for driving EVs anyway probably per mile as I've already said. So I hope that's cleared up some of that and uh, if you have any comments I'd love to hear them. Brown car guy. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please hit the like button and share this video as well if you can. And while you're at it, check out these guys who also sponsor my content. I am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment, put fuel in the cars, and yes, buy a cup of coffee. You can do the same. Just go here or right here on YouTube. Just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks. Make sure you're signed in first. My content is free. But this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next.